Now, let's proceed. Uh, hindi, pinutol ko po ang topic last Sunday dahil na-sense ko na kailangan na tayong mag-pray. So, let's just proceed yung sinishare, na-share ko nung Sunday, yung unveiling the secrets and the power of prayer. Of course, Jesus Christ from the Gospels, uh, pinakita niya kung ano talaga ang panalangin. Ano ang dapat gawin sa panalangin? Ano ang hindi dapat gawin sa panalangin? Okay? Uh, of course, hindi tinuro ni Jesus Christ kung ano, ano bang dapat position mo sa panalangin. Nakaluhod ba? Nakatihaya? Nakatayo? Nakapikit? Wala po, of course. Uh, na makita natin sa Bible na tinuro ni Jesus Christ kung anong klaseng position mo, mahalaga yung ikaw ay matutong tumawag sa Diyos, sa pangalan ni Jesus, okay? At pinakita niya doon na ito, huwag mo dapat gawin ito pag mag-pray ka, huwag kang maging, huwag kang maging plastic, sabi ni Jesus, huwag kang maging orokan, don't be hypocrite, and don't be like the pagans na paulit-ulit, paulit-ulit, paulit-ulit lang na ginagawa, eh, they are just bubbling in the air. That's not the way to pray. And then sabi niya sa chapter uh, 6 na Matthew, sabi niya, this then how you should pray. Ayun, binigyan niya yung pattern, yung model on how to pray, which is many of us believes that this pattern is the, the so-called the Lord's Prayer. Hindi po. It is the, the pattern, the model on how we should pray. Kasi sabi ni Jesus Christ, this then, this, this then, how you should pray. I'll just show to you, no? O yan. Uh, sabi niya, this then is how you should pray. This is the pattern. This is the model on how to pray. Paano? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us not into temptation. Uh, forgive us as we forgive our sins, uh, our, uh, those people who offended us. And uh, lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power forever and ever. So, yung una, kailangan magpuri at magpasalamat kay Lord. Hindi ka gaya ng isang bastos. Wala pang ginawa. Pahingi nga. Hindi po ganun, no? Let's... Let's worship God first and thank Him for all His goodness. And then pagkatapos nun, Lord, now let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Gusto ko bang maranasan ang langit dito sa lupa? Hindi po impyerno sa lupa. Gusto pong maranasan ang langit dito sa lupa. Ang iyong presensya, ang iyong pagmamahal, ang iyong kapangyarihan, ang iyong kadakilaan, talagang walang imposible sa iyo. And then, that's the time. Pagkatapos nun, Lord, uh, I need a job. Or, Lord, heal me. Or, heal my son or my daughter. Restore my family. Lord, uh, I pray na makuha ko ang bidding na to. Or, makapag-reach out ako. That's the time you pray, no? And then, Lord, kung meron pong na-offend, I will, I will go to them and humble myself and ask for forgiveness. And those who have offended me, I have forgiven them. That is, that's the way to pray, no? And then, Lord, strengthen me. Ang dami mga tukso na yung problema. Lead us not into temptation, no? Deliver me. That's the way we pray. Uh, you don't need to, to be religious. Ang maganda dito, habang nagda-drive ka, habang naglalaba ka, habang namamalansya ka, habang nagluluto ka, you can pray. Kung nagda-drive kayo, please don't close your eyes. Okay? So, delikado po. Uh, you can pray na dilat ang mata mo, no? Kasi para makita mo kung ano ang pagkilos at ginagawa ni Lord right before you. Kaya dapat po, kung pwede po, eh, naka, nakadilat, naka, hindi po nakapikit ang mata. So, the secrets of prayers ay diniscuss natin, exercise ang faith. Kasi naligtas tayo sa pananampalataya, dapat nabubuhay tayo sa pananampalataya. 
At anumang bagay na hindi sa pananampalataya ay tayo nagkakasala, sabi ni Lord. At pagka inactivate ang faith natin, natutuwa si Lord. Sabi ng Hebrews chapter 11, uh, verse 6. And Jesus Christ Himself, manalig tayo sa Diyos. At pagka tayo nag-pray, na pagka nag-pray kayo, wala pa sa'yo, pero magpasalamat ka na. May nararamdaman ka pang sa katawan mo, magpasalamat ka na. That's faith. No? At wala pa sa'yo, nagpapasalamat. That's faith. And then, don't ever, ever forget na manatili kay Kristo at sa kanya mga pangako. Napakalaga po yan eh. Kasi God, God's power is being activated when we bring back His promise to us. Lord, sinabi mo eh. Pagka, nang, pagka meron tayong sakit, sinabi mo, Lord, dahil sa iyo mga latet, mga sugat, ako'y gumaling. Sa, saan yun? Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. Lord, uh, sabi mo, you will supply all my needs. Philippians 4.19, when we are in need. Kailangan meron tayong mga pangako ng Diyos na ibalik natin sa Kanya, sinabi mo, Lord, eh. Sinabi mo, Lord, eh. Kaya ngayon, aking uh, uh, kiniklaim at tinatanggap na ang mga pangako mo sa akin. Kailangan panghawakan po natin. Meron tayong pinangahawakan. Hindi yung hingi ka ng hingi, wala ka namang talata na pinangahawakan. Okay? Kagaya ng uh, uh, paano ka nakakatiyak na ikaw ang may-ari ng sakin yan, siyempre kung meron kang OR and, and CR ba yun? Ha? Kung baga sa bahay, meron kang title, di ba? And the Word of God is our title deed. Our ORCR sa sakyan. So when we bring back, when tayo po ay nag, uh, nananatili kay Kristo at ang kanyang salita ay ating pinangahawakan, ay eh, talagang sigurado po yan. Pangatlo, yung forgiveness. Alam nyo, sabi, kagaya ni Jesus Christ, how, how can God forgive you na hindi ka naman marunong patawad. Ha? Ang taong pinatawad ay marunong magpatawad. Eh paano yung tao hindi marunong magpatawad? Hindi pa napatawad yun. Tandaan nyo yun. Huwag mo sabihin na pinatawad ka tapos hindi ka marunong magpatawad. Eh pagkalaki-laki ng kasalanan mo, tapos yung kasalanan na na yung ng kapwa na nakasagot sa iyo, hindi mo mapatawad, ano, ano ka ba? Alala yung... Uh, uh, example ni Jesus Christ pinatawad ng 10 million dollars na utang pinatawad siya dahil wala siyang karap, uh, kapangyarihan magbayad abay pagkataas pinatawad nakita niya nagkautang na 100 dollars lang hindi niya sinakal niya bayaran mo, bayaran mo ko ano nangyari nakita siya ng kapwa uh, kapwa niya sinumbong sa hari pinatawag muli sa Nang hari, sabi niya, how dare you? Sabi niya, I've forgiven your millions and millions of dollars debt. And then here is your kapwa, 100 dollars lang, hindi mo mapatawad. Alam mo, sabi ng hari, bring him to the prison where there are torturers. He will be tortured day and night. God gave the authority over the devil to torture those people who don't know how to forgive. So tayo po, na pinatawad ng Diyos ng pagkalaki-laking kasalanan mula nang tayo po ay nagkaisip hanggang tayo po ay nakakilala kay Lord, ang daming kasalanan na gawa, ay niya pinatawad tayo ni Lord. Yung pakayang kapirangkot lang na kasalanan na gawa ng ating asawa, ating mga kapatid, mga anak, o kanino man. Let's be quick to forgive. Swallow our pride and for the sake, for your own sake, magpatawad ka. Dahil meron pong karapatan ng demonyo na ligaligan ka. Ligaligan ka. Ito, torture ka niya. How can you worship the Lord? Ha? How can you worship the Lord when there is unforgiveness and bitterness and hatred inside of you? Kaya, yung kasalan, yung dahil dyan, meron tayong nararamdamang sakit at sakit at karamdaman na hindi ma-detect ng even the most sophisticated equipment sa hospital. Why? Hindi niya malocate yan eh. Spiritual kasi eh. Kaya, 
if God has forgiven you, you should forgive. Sabi ni Jesus Christ, but if you do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive your sins. Of course, up, up, applying, asking, seeking, and knocking, we have discussed that. And now, the, uh, the fifth one, let's be persistent. Okay? Lalo na pagdating sa sakit at karamdaman. There are, si there are sickness na parang talaba na kumapit sa katawan natin na ayaw tayong lisanin at iwanan. Dito papasok ang persistence. Okay? Sickness is a very stubborn spirit. I want to tell you. It's not just sickness, it's a spirit. And it is very stubborn. Okay? Even poverty is not a mindset. It is a spirit na dumapo sa inyo at ayaw ng pagkawalan. So dito ba pasok ang uh, spirit of persistence? Patience, persistence, and perseverance. Jesus uh, gave a powerful uh, story concerning the widow and the unjust judge na hindi, naninu, hindi naniniwala sa Diyos at walang pakialam sa kapwa. Tingnan niyo po, uh, verse, uh, chapter 18, verse 1, Jesus told His disciples a parable to show them what? That you should always pray and never give up. That's a very powerful teaching. Kaya niya ginamit ang story ito para tayo ay palagi manalangin and never give up. Sabi mo sa katabi, never give up. Sampalin mo nga, never give up. Don't quit. Ha? Ang problema sa atin, madali tayong mag-quit. Kaya nadi-discouraged tayo. When you are discouraged, it will lead you to depression. And when you are depressed, ano mo ang kasunod nun? Magpapatiwakal ka na. We believers do not quit. Wala sa atin ang madaling mag-give up. Wala sa, sa ating buhay ang madaling mag-quit. Tayo ay mga palaban. Ha? Hindi tayo, we do not uh, receive no for an answer. Only yes. Why? You know, this is beautiful. Uh, paki, paki ano mo nga yung 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. This is a beautiful promise from God. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. No matter how many the promises of God, yan ang nakalagay, they are always yes and amen in Christ. Yan. Verse 20 of 2 Corinthians Chapter 1. Basay natin. No matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so, through Him, the Amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. So, to us who believe in God, to us who are children of God, the promises of God are always yes and no. Huh? I, I mean, yes. And yes, lang pala. Okay? Don't take no for an answer. Kaya lang, if you want yes, be patient. And be persistent. And persevere. Ha? Huh? Kagaya ng sakit at karandaman yan, kailangan palaban ka. Hindi ka ka kumapit parang talaba sa iyo yan. Lumabang kasipain mo yan. I was a young boy Noong sinumpa ko ang kahirapan, talagang pinagtatadya kong kahirapan. Ayoko ng kahirapan. Gusto ko ng pagpapala mo, Panginoon. Ayun, na-discover ko sikreto. At tingnan nyo naman po ang nagawa sa atin ni Lord when we, we found the secret of experiencing financial abundance, yung pagpapala, yung blessing ni Lord by uh, practicing giving and receiving, by sowing and reaping, and practicing yung tithing and giving offering kay Lord. We discovered these secrets and God, look at, look at you, look at all of us here who put our faith and obedience kay Lord, naranasan natin 
ang reversal ng poverty into God's blessings upon our lives. The same with sickness. You have to fight. Don't give up on your, on this sickness. Attacking your body, your soul and spirit. Don't give up. Do not lose hope. <coughs> fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Going back to Luke chapter 18, verse 1 to 8, he used an extreme illustration. Jesus used an extreme illustration. There was a judge who don't believe in God, who don't fear in God, and doesn't care about people. Extreme yan. Hindi naniwala sa Diyos at walang pakialam sa kapwa. This is a judge. And there was a widow, araw-araw, oras-oras, Ah, hindi niya tinantanan ang judge dahil ito lang ang pag-asa niya. She is a widow, walang defender, but there is this judge who, who she believes ito lang ang kanyang makapagbigay ng justisya sa kanya. So, anong ginawa niya? Hindi tinantanan. Paggising sa umaga, sa tanghali, sa gabi, araw, gabi, araw, gabi, anong sabi ng ang just judge? Kahit hindi ako naniwala sa Diyos, kahit wala akong pakialam sa kapwa, para tumigil lang ang biyudang ito, bibigyan ko na siya ng justice. Look at the application of Jesus and the challenge of Jesus. Sabi niya, for some, uh, sabi, sabi ng Bible, and the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And then verse 7, and will not God bring about justice for His chosen ones who cry out to Him day and night? Will He keep putting them off? I tell you, He will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, mayroon bang siyang masasumpo ang pananampalataya sa atin? Mga kapatid, justice is your healing for those who are sick. Justice is your blessings for those who are poor. Justice for those family na winawasak, binabayo ng demonyo and you will be restored. Don't ever, ever give up on your family. Don't ever, ever, ever give up on your children. Don't ever, ever give up on your spouse, your husband, on your wife. Fight! Don't quit! Don't throw the towel for your sickness. Don't give up. Let the husband fight with you. Let the children, the whole family fight with you. Let us not give up. Together, fight. Hindi yung sumusuko ng iba, no. We never take no for an answer. We want yes because the promises of God, no matter how many they are, there are always yes and amen in Christ. Amen po ba? Do not give up. Do not quit. Pangalawa po, the spirit of brokenness. Alam nyo, there are times that you don't need to, you don't need to, to cry or, I mean, you don't need to say it. Oh, God knows how broken we are, lalo na tayo mga tatay, when we see our children na parang walang wisdom, they're stupid, parang ganon, na wala silang common sense, walang sense of direction, they don't know what is right and what is wrong, alam na papahamak na sila, tuloy-tuloy pa rin sila sa kahibangan, sa kahangalan, and, and if you're a father like me, if you're a mother like you, meron kang ganyang anak, or meron kang ganyang asawa, it is very painful. Napakasakit, di po ba? Kita mo, mahal na mahal mong anak mo, tapos ganyan ang kalagayan niya, napapahamak siya. Nasasaktan. Kung nasasaktan ang mga anak, mas masakit 
sa mga magulang. Di po ba? Napakasakit po sa mga magulang. Ang makita mo ang isang anak na nagdurusa, nagihirap. Ha? And then he took the board exam, nag-fail. Napakasakit sa isang sudyante na bumagsak sa board exam. Pero I want to tell you, mas mahirap sa mga magulang to see the children failing because we love you so much. We care for you. That's why, look at this person who is so broken. There are two people who went to the temple, the super religious person and the super wicked person, the Pharisee and the tax collector. Yeah, super religious, super self-righteous, super, super wicked, super, super sinful person, which is the tax collector. The tax collector are the, are the outcasts rejected to the society. Alam mo, panalain ng mga hudyo sa mga tax collector, pagka nakakita ng tax collector, sana masagasaan ka ng pison. Sana tama ka ng, ng uh, kidlat. Sana mamatay ka na, maataki ka. Bakit? Napakasamang tao ng mga tax collector. Eh. Ka kababayan nila, ginigipit ng todo-todo. Kumingi ng Roman, ang, Ro ang Rome ng 100 dollars ang kumaningil 300 to 500 dollars ginigipit ang kapwa nila kaya two extreme individual went to the temple sabi ng, ng Pharisees Lord I thank you that I am a Jew yeah. sabi niya I am not like the wicked people, the sinners particularly this tax collector sabi niya I fast two times a day at two times a week and I give my tithes to the poor. Alagang, ang galing na panalagi, no? Ito naman, ang tax collector, hindi man siya lumapit sa temple, eh, nasa dulo pa eh. Wasak ang puso. Alam niya na siya isang makasalanan na na-hurt niya si Lord dahil sa kanyang kasalanan. Kanyang ginagawa. Dinadagukan ang kanyang didib, sabi ng Bible. Di man makapagsalita. Because he's so broken. And then sabi niya, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Hila po sinabi niya. Habang dinadagukan ang kanyang didib, mahabag kayo sa akin ay sa makasalanan. Look at the word of Jesus. Verse 14, I tell you that this man, rather than the Pharisee, went home justified before God, for all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. God knows all our needs. God knows how broken, how hurting you are. Alam ng Diyos, you're bleeding and hurting inside. Alam ng Diyos, masyado ko yung nasasaktan. But it doesn't mean you don't need to cry out to the Lord. No, the more you will humble yourself, run to God, cry out to God, and since He knows exactly who we are and what we are. When you open your mouth, boom, God hears us. Hindi po totoo, God is, ang iba kasi ang ginagawa ng iba, pagka dumarana sila matinding pagsubok, kapigat yan sa buhay, sinisisipan nila si Lord or biniblame nila si Lord. Hindi dapat, no? Kaya tayo nakakaganito dahil sa maling desisyon at kahibangan na ginagawa natin. Kaya tayo po nakakaranas ng ganyang sitwasyon. So, pero tandaan nyo, hindi tayo po ang culprit. The devil is the culprit here. Eh. Tinukso tayo dahil marupok lang tayo, bumigay, kaya dyan na, naging biktima tayo. We are all victims. 
But there is a God who loves us out of our brokenness and desperateness. Lalapit sa Kanya, Siya po'y kikilos at gagawa ng kamanghamang ng mga bagay. And lastly, ang walo, be desperate. Like the man, desperateness, desperado, <laughs> walang ginawa. Ito yung mga tulisan. Kaya na pa ako sa krus. These are, ito po yung mga salot ng lipunan. Walang ginawa, kundi uh, magagrabyado uh, sa kapwa. Kaya para sila'y matuto, at mga, para hindi na sila pamarisan ng, ng kanilang kapwa, the Roman Empire introduced the most heinous punishment, which is the cross. During the time, ang pinaka-nakakatakot na parusa na inintroduce during the time the Roman Empire is crucifixion. Ito po ay uh, hindi po biro. Para matakot ang mga nasasakupan at hindi na sila pamarisan sa kanilang kahibangan at sa kasalanan, they introduced the Roman law. I mean, the crucifixion. That's why there are two who were crucified sa kaliwa at kanan ni Jesus. Yung nasa kanan niya, kung ikaw ang Kristo, iligtas mo yung sarili. At pagkatapos, kami. Ito po, siguro Ilocano ito, Jakpati, Jakita. Okay? <laughs> to cease to believe. <laughs> Sigurist, sigurista. Huh? Ligtas mo muna sarili mo, then pagkatapos, kami na. Okay. Uh, parang hinamak pa si Jesus ay uh, nagsalita nasa kaliwa sabi niya huwag mo sabihin niya na tayo karapat dapat tayo mapako sa krus dahil tayo makasalanan salot ng lipunan pero itong kristong ito walang ginawa kasalanan at uh, tumigil ka dyan and out of his desperateness he is in pain and horrible suffering he looked up to Jesus and said, Lord, remember me when you come in your kingdom. He acknowledges that Jesus is king. He acknowledges that Jesus is a savior. Remember me. When it is done, you will go back to your kingdom. Remember me. What a desperateness, what a humility. Ano sa ni Jesus today, hindi tomorrow, hindi sinabi, oy, mag-baptist ka muna. O magbago muna, hindi. Right? Then and then. Walang ibang sinabi si Jesus, ngayon din, makasama kita sa paraiso. He was still on the cross. But He was given a powerful assurance today. You are with me already in paradise. Nakapako sa cross. Naligtas. Pero please naman, huwag nyo lang hintayin mapako sa cross. Sabi mo sa'yo katabi, huwag mo lang hintayin kasi mapako sa cross. Kailangan mo mo mapako sa cross? Magbihib na tayo. Amen. Hello. Gusto bang, gusto yung po bang mapako kayo doon? Mas kayo yan. Magbihib na tayo. Jesus paid it all. Today, not tomorrow, someday, hopefully, maybe, wala! It is a powerful assurance today. You will be with me in paradise. Kaya ang pagbabago, ang decision, eh, ngayon, hindi bukas. And you will see the glory of the Lord. And then the second desperate na nakita ko, actually, these are the shortest prayers na makita niyo sa Bible. When Jesus Christ is walking, was walking on the water, nakita siya ng mga disciples na takot, akala nila multo. Sabi ni Jesus, it is I, your Lord. Aba, ito na. Ito yung paborito kong eksena eh. This is one of my favorites actually. 
Nung na, nalaman na, it was Jesus Christ, sabi ni Pedro, Lord, kung iya, kung ikaw yan eh, pwede bang samahan kita naglalakad? Sarap yata, naglalakad, naglalakad sa, da, sa dagat eh. Wala pa nakagawa niya. Ha? Samahan kita, Lord. Ha? Please, I want to experience walking on water. And sabi ni Lord, by all means, Pete. So, nakalakad sa dagat. Pedro. Tanong ng mga ang tanong, bakit nakalakad sa dagat si Pedro? Sabi ng mga Baptist, dahil ang mata niya nakatingin kay Jesus. Sabi ng ibang mga Baptist, dahil may pananampalataya kay Jesus kaya nakalakad sa dagat. Given na po yun eh. But the most practical answer kung bakit nakalakad si Pedro sa dagat ay dahil umalis siya sa bangka. Sabi ko sa inyo katabi, gusto mo maglakad sa dagat, umalis ka sa bangka. Gusto mo makalaya, lumay, umalis ka dyan. Make a step of faith, get out! Gusto mo lumaya, ayaw mo umalis. Hindi pwede. Gusto mong gumaling, pero parang ikaw pa nag-aalaga sa sakit. Hindi pwede. Get out! Ha? Huh? Get out and then try to walk. I give it up. May panalam pala. Sasabihin ba niya kung walang panalam pala? At tapos nakatingin, of course, na-disturb siya when he felt the wind and when he, when he heard the, the, the waves. And then, kung gaano kabilis na inalis ang kanyang mata kay Jesus, ganun din kabilis ang paglubog niya. And of course, no lumubog siya. The shortest, one of the shortest prayer is, Lord, save me. It's very short. Lord, save me. Lord, save me. And then, they went back to the boat. Kung gano'ng kahirap, because the wind, sabi ng Bible, contrary to them, no nakasakay, nakasakay si Jesus sa boat, ang bilis nilang nakarating sa kabilang ibayo. See, when Jesus is with you, makakarating at makakarating ka. Amen po ba? Ha? Ah, praise God. Palapakan natin si Lord. So, these are the secrets that Jesus revealed to us sa panalangin. Ha? Ah, he gave us the do's and don'ts and this is, they gave us the secrets. Ang una, Manalig sa Diyos. Pangalawa, magpatawad po tayo. Pangatlo, manatili tayo sa kanyang salita at manatili kay Jesus. And then, practice yung asking, uh, seeking, and finding. Kasi you have not because you ask not, sabi ng James chapter 4, verse 2. You have not because you ask not. Kaya, Umingi tayo kay Lord. And then, itong last three na diniscuss natin, kailangan maging persistent tayo. Don't ever, ever give up. Do not lose hope. Do not quit. Okay? And then, of course, be broken before God. Alam natin na sinubukan na natin ang lahat. Wala nangyari. And then, let's cry out and run to God. And then, be desperate. The only best solution for all our needs is Jesus Christ. Then cry out to Him. Now, before we will pray, I want you to see these two powerful verses. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, of which many of you memorized. And then your Ephesians 3.20. Let us read these two powerful verses. For those of you who memorized Jeremiah 33, verse 3, Call unto me, and I will answer you, and I will show great and mighty things which thou hast thou knowest not. But I want you to see the last sentence. Paki, paki ano nga, the last sentence ng Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Sabi niya sa first two, call unto me, and then I will answer you. Grabe, no? Come on, uh, Jeremiah 33, 3. Call, call to me. Kayo mga may cell phone dyan, 
nalolo budget na wawala ng ng ano yon pagka wala ka ng signal tsaka wala naubos na yung binayad mo wala na putol na no but Jesus has given us only call anytime any moment anywhere ha huh? call just call Eh, huwag niyo pag malaki ang cellphone niyo yan. Nawawala na signal yan. Nawawala ng battery yan. Na low, low bat, no signal. Ano yung pagkain tapos na yung binayad mo? Nawawala ng load. But the Lord is offering us, hey, dude, chong, chang, it's cold. Sino ka man? Huwag, huwag mo sabihin na Baptist ka o Catholic ka. No. Mahalaga, ikaw ay may pangangailangan, call. Tawag lang. Ha? And I will answer you, what an assurance. Where can you find an assurance he will surely answer us? And the, well, the most beautiful of them all is the word, and I will tell you, sa other translation, I will show you great and unsearchable things you do not know. When God answers, it will blow your mind. When God will answer your prayers more than sabi nga ng Ephesians chapter 2 chapter 3 verse 20 because this God is able to do immeasurably other translation to do exceedingly abundantly more than you think and ask it will blow your mind Hindi maharok ng pag-iisip mo ang kayang-kayang gawin ng Diyos. It will blow your mind. It's so simple and yet, wow. Huh? Now, no human being can do it. Only God. That's why sabi ng Bible, He is able. Nothing is impossible with God. It is so difficult and so impossible ang yung sitwasyon but God is able. Meron kang sitwasyon na naranasan ngayon, call. Call Him. And He will surely answer you. Yan. Sasampulin ka niya. Na hindi pa nakita ng tao, hindi pa naranasan sa tanong buhay mo, ang kayang-kayang gawin ng Diyos sa atin. Kaya, bilang hamon sa bawat sa atin, kilala ka ng Diyos at alam ng Diyos ang iyong kalagayan. I know you've been fighting, but never give up. Do not lose hope. Be broken and be desperate before God. God, no matter how many the promises, he has. They're always yes and amen in the Lord. I want you to stand where you are if you want God to do something in your life. Kagaya na sinabi ko last Sunday, hindi ka lang ng isang muna kay Lord. Yung nag-share kahapon, mag sila, sabi niya, tigisa tayo, sabi niya, para marami. Hindi lang isa isang mag-asawa, kundi tigisa tayo para makadala tayo kay Lord. And they got it this way. Ang <laughs> iningin nila kay Lord. So, no matter how difficult, how impossible ang sitwasyon mo ngayon, kay Lord, sis you lang yan. Do not lose hope. Do not give up. Para makita mo, you know, the greater the need, the greater faith we have. And the greater, the more impossible your situation, the Lord, the more God is glorified. Ang mga, ma, ang mga impossible at napakahirap, la, pagka naranasan mo ang katakilaan ni Lord, lalim titindi ang pananalig at ang commitment mo kay Lord. This, sabi ng Ro, uh, John chapter 9, these things happens not because of your sin, but because God wants to glorify Himself. 
Gusto niya pakita na siya ay dakila sa lahat. Kaya ano man ang sitwasyon mo, ano man ang kalagayan mo, God is fully aware. Just humble yourself, cry out, call upon Him. And He will surely answer us. It may not be now, but progressive yan. So there are instant miracles, but there are progressive healing. Hindi, hindi, hindi minsanan, yun ay, they call it miracle. Pero yung, there are progressive miracles, yung healing ni Lord, na you are improving, and you are improving, you are improving, hanggang completely and totally healed. Doon papasok ang persistence and perseverance. Nilalaban mo. Okay? I want you to raise your hands and cry out to the Lord. And I, let's, I agree with you. Okay? Sino ka man? Ano man ang kalagayan mo? Ano man ang sitwasyon? Open your heart and your mouth. Cry out to the Lord. And you will see the miracle. The supernatural work of the Lord sa buhay mo. Sa iyong familia, sa iyong business, sa iyong trabaho, sa iyong mga anak. Come on, open your heart. Believe God. No matter how many the promises of God, they are always yes and amen in the Lord, in Christ. Yes, Lord, I agree. Come on, cry out to the Lord. Open your heart. Wala imposible kay Lord. Sasampo lang ka ni Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, hallelujah. Oh, the presence of the Lord is in this place, in this house. Hallelujah. God is reaching out on you. He's not just touching you. He is performing great and mighty things sa buhay mo. He's doing great and mighty things sa buhay mo, kapatid. He remembers. Hindi ka niya nakalimutan, kapatid. He remembers. He remembers you. He remembers all your effort, all your sacrifices, all the deeds you've done in His name. Look at Cornelius. Look at Zechariah. God remembers them. And then they receive supernatural. Hallelujah. Remember all these people, Lord. Salamat po na yun ang iniuna at ang mapampalang kamay. Ang iyong makapangyarang kamay. Ano man at sino man sila, ano man ang kanilang kalagayan, sitwasyon, problema, you are the answer. Wala yung posible sa'yo, Lord. Sample niyo ang bawat isa sa amin. Na kayo'y Diyos na dakila. Na kayo'y Diyos na makapangyarihan sa lahat. Ang lahat ay nakapangyayari. Thank you for the supernatural miracle, physically, financially, relationally, and spiritually. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You said, call unto me. Your people are, have called now. Thank you for the assurance of answered prayers. And you will show, Lord, you said, you will show great and mighty things they do not know. You said you are able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you think, more than we think and ask. Because there is power within us that is working miraculously and mightily. Thank you, Lord. Because you are bound to your word, we thank you that we receive what we have asked already. Because we ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone would say, Amen. Praise God. Palapakan si Lord. Hallelujah.